Hi there, Robin here from Expert Island, and today it's Q&A day, and we're also uh, at the end of the Q&A is going to uh, have a preview of all the upcoming products and videos that we're going to be having. Uh, so let's get uh, right to it. So we've got a bunch of questions, and we'll try and get through some of these, and uh, hopefully the answers help. Uh, here we've got one from James, and it's a straight up question. We'll get the easy ones out first. Uh, is Avante more powerful uh, than uh, Electro Voices uh, ZLX? Now, I'm going to say by the manufacturer's numbers, you would think so, because ZLX says 1,000 watts and Avante says 1,200 watts. I'm going to say dB wise in the real world, I like to call that dynamic dB. Uh, so, real music playing, all that kind of stuff. They're probably about the same. I don't think you'd you know, dramatically see one louder than the other. Uh, the advantage, though, to the Advante is it does have some more bells and whistles on the back. So if you like toys, there's definitely a lot of options to turn things on and off with the Avante and do adjustments. Uh, on the other hand, the ZLX is on promo most of the time right now. If that we're talking about the ZLX 15P, uh, soon you're only going to be getting the ZLX 15BT, which is the same model with Bluetooth, but that's, uh, that's down the road. So for now, uh, most of the time you're going to see them at the same price point. So it's really a preference. You do get, you know, uh, Avante is, you know, backed by American DJ. So that means really good service network. Same thing happens with, uh, Elect uh, with Electro Voice. So Electro Voice has got a great network of service. So both of them are really good. Uh, the only thing I did talk about when I did the Avante is, man, the amp plate does get hot. The fan never really went on, but it never seemed to have a problem. So... It's really a personal sound choice at that point if you get to listen to both. There we go. Ah, James, I hope that helped. That's a pretty straightforward one. It's a, it has to do the question itself it's from uh, Noel, and it's uh, can you use the Eon 615 outdoors in open areas? Now, I'm thinking two things. I'm thinking, well, outdoors, yes, no problem. Open areas, no problem. Uh, just remember, there's no reflection of sound, so the sound's going to be pretty directional to whichever way you point it and uh, you know it's only gonna have so much travel distance so you want to mount it up nice and high if it's for a large group of people uh, but a good note even though it's made out of plastic and all that the amp plates aren't on the back so whenever you're doing an outdoor show uh, and you're taking out your powered speakers always make sure to have some clear garbage bags because if you think it might rain slide them on top the music will play right through it as if it wasn't even there so that's always just a really good handy tip. Have those bags stuffed in with your cables and all that in case you need it. Because the worst thing is, is to be doing a show uh, and it, you're worried about a little drizzle, covering up with plastic, keep the show going, everybody will be happier. So a question from Admin Admin. So that's his username, yes it is. Uh, and he asked me, uh, do I use TR or TRS cables? Normally when I'm doing all the demos on tables, I use TR cables, which are what they call tip and ring. That's what the TR stands for. And tip ring and sleeve would definitely be the, the one that looks like a stereo cable. Now, the reason why I use uh, the TR cables is because I'm doing short runs and it makes it a lot easier because some things aren't for balanced use. Sometimes they can get confused. Uh, so always check your equipment. Uh, but because I'm always on the demo table here with six foot or less cables, unbalanced cables or TR cables will do the job just fine. So uh, there's nothing wrong with using one or the other as long as your equipment can handle it. So you usually look at the back of whatever equipment you have. In this case, this AKG wireless microphone system, just because I have it on the table, uh, says balanced on it. So uh, yes, you can use unbalanced, but what's nice is it is built for balanced use. So uh, when you use a balanced cable at both ends, it means you're going to have a noise cancelling built-in technology uh, that helps. Now, that technology really kicks in on long, long runs of cables. So when I say long, I mean 50 feet or greater, 25 feet or greater. Uh, the better quality TR cable will carry up to 50 feet. Uh, any TRS cable can carry up to 50 feet, so that's the difference. So unbalanced versus balanced uh, table always TR when I have it. So I've got a question from Eddie and he's a DJ and he is talking about what we have on table here. He's asking about wireless microphone setup and which way we get him the best results. Uh, so some of the problems you get with wired or wireless microphones, Eddie, is that uh, you're on stage, you might have a subwoofer next to you and you could get feedback. Now, regardless if I'm using a corded or cordless, this can become a problem. Now, I know in your question you're asking, what should I turn up and how much? Now, 
The idea is, is that you should always be driving your master volume to your full length anyway, so you're going you're gonna to basically pull back on the music and then just have to uh, bring up your master volume to whatever desired microphone level you like. But the important thing is try and balance your system off so you can have your mic settings. So in this case, I happen to have a, a Den DJ on the table, which has two mic inputs, one in the front, one in the back. And it has mic levels up on top. Now I would start with 12 o'clock before I start the actual show, give a room a sound test on it, bring up my main level and see how that's going to run the room. Now, the reason why I want to do that is I'm looking for feedback in the room. Uh, a controller that has a good microphone input besides just a mic input will give you a uh, low, mid and high adjustment. And the reason that's there is not just to make you sound better, which is kind of cool, but it also helps you dial out uh, feedback, which can come in at different frequencies because feedback can be down low where the bass is, or it can be up high where the horns are. Uh, and a lot of times it's just kind of buried in the mid range. So if you start turning up your volume levels and you've got your mic level at 50 or 60% uh, and the volume sounds like you're getting to where you want to be on the mic, but you're feeling when you walk around that you're on the edge of getting feedback, that, that high pitched squeal on the background or a low rumble if you're on next to the subwoofer, well then dial back on those particular frequencies. So if it's a subwoofer issue, when you're standing at your controller next to your subwoofer, pull back a little bit on the subwoofer, on sorry, the low frequencies, and that's going to help reduce feedback from the sub. If it's uh, something that's coming in the mid range, that's why you got a mid, if you're lucky, and a high. If not, sometimes people get a small mixer to help improve that. Now, a lot of wireless equipment, of course, have gain controls on the front. So these gain controls tend to increase and decrease the overall sensitivity of the microphone. So uh, I don't want to use this primarily as my volume control because that's just going to increase, we'll call it the balloon around the microphone, how powerful. So that's the difference between me holding the mic down here and holding it up here. So this can actually be uh, an issue with feedback because if this is too big, it's easily going to pick up the speaker and that's where the feedback starts. So you want to keep these again, start at medium, and uh, a lot of times your guests, uh, maybe they had a, a, a buck and doe that you were at or whatever they call it before the wedding. Uh, they had a party, that sort of thing. Uh, it's also a good opportunity to use your mics there if you're hosting that event as well. Uh, also at a uh, rehearsal practice uh, setup that they may have, you may also want to demonstrate to them uh, how to hold a microphone. It sounds terrible that you have to tell people that because everybody's like, oh, I know I don't use a microphone. And most, people's, most people see microphones on TV. And so they all think it's down here and they all think it's okay or just hold it like this. Uh, if you take a couple of minutes, uh, find a fun way to do it and give them a little demonstration on uh, you know, holding up a microphone so their entire family can hear them, even grandma and grandpa you know, sitting at the table. Uh, that usually is a good way uh, to get good sound out of your microphone. So, I mean, those are all a bunch of little tips. I mean, take the ones you like. Uh, if you've got any more tips on that, please add them down below. But that's pretty much it for that. So, Eddie, good luck. I know you bought yourself, you got yourself a DDJSR uh, and you got yourself a uh, 2400 series from Pile and those will work together just fine. Just remember, work on the gains and work on the levels and do a little bit of practicing. The idea is, if you're consistent, the only thing that really is going to change is how much actual master volume you put to your speakers after you turn your music down. All right, so I've reset the table and I've got a great question from Jolt and it has to do with the fact that he was signed to a salesperson, the salesperson said it wouldn't work and he didn't quite get the why. Uh, and we're going to talk about it today. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while, so it's a good opportunity. Uh, basically, it has a synthesizer, and it has basically two mono connections to create stereo sound, so left channel, right channel, and he'd like to plug it into his thump, uh, and he thought he can use a cable that is like this, which is a split cable. Now, so thinking just use a splitter, I can hook up my left and right with these guys here. Uh, maybe it's an RCA connection like that. Maybe it's a quarter inch connection like this and that would be an unbalanced connection like a TR cable. And then it would go to something like this, which would combine both of those signals 
into a cable that's uh, in the industry. This part here, uh, considered to be a balance cable, uh, it looks like a stereo connection because we've got two brakes on it, right? So it's, but in this case, when we're talking about mixing boards or speakers, if the speakers have the ability to be balanced and unbalanced, that's really then what the difference is between these two tips. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate what happens. This is how noise canceling, when people talk about, ooh, it's better to use a balanced cable, they're talking about noise canceling. Uh, that requires a chart to show how that all works, but basically anything that gets inverted uh, in the system gets brought back to normal at the end when it gets to the you know, output end of it, either the speaker or through the mixer. And at that point, anything that's uh, duplicated, it sees as noise and it just cancels it out if it's at the high and the low point on the actual chart. So like I said, the how it works is quite complicated, but it's all done in analog, which is really, really good. So this is why it doesn't work. Now it does work sometimes if your speaker is unbalanced, then it really wouldn't ignore it. But what's going on is I'm going to simulate this with this mixer. I'm gonna take two channels, my two main channels out, and I'm using unbalanced cable at this end. That's coming together. It's gonna to bring both channels together on this unit here. Uh, this mixer is now gonna think that I've run a uh, balanced TRS cable to it. And I'm gonna plug that right into channel four on the mixer. Now this normally doesn't happen if you're plugging in some of the other channels, but on the mic channels, definitely a problem. And again, on some speakers that have the option when you see it in the back, balance slash unbalance, this could also be a problem. Now you'll notice I'm gonna play this music and it'll sound a little flat, a little dull, and then I'll unplug one of these RCA jacks right here and it'll come back to life. And then we'll put it back on, it'll be dull again. What's happening is everything that's the same on the left and right, the speaker, or in this case the mixer, thinks that's background noise and it basically cancels it out, says I don't wanna hear that. And doesn't let it go to the speaker. Everything that's different, so just the outside parts of the left and right channel, which are truly different, are being let through. So let's hit play. Now I'm going to actually pull off the left channel. We're gonna make this unbalanced. So you hear how that, the depth came back into that system. The low ends tend to be shared between the left and right channel. Now I'll put it back in. Just like that, it's gone again. Cable off. Now, there's nothing wrong with what's going on here. It's actually doing its job. So you really have to kind of like think ahead when you're buying cables and how you want to hook things up. Normally, if you want to hook up a synthesizer, uh, a drum machine, uh, pads, controllers, mixers uh, together or onto a system, you want to look and say, okay, is this coming as a single channel? And if it is, I'm gonna tie up one of my single channels up here. If it's coming out as a two channel setup, so we're gonna have two independent channels, a left and right. We wanna look at our mixer and down our mixer, we're gonna see things, we're gonna see things like after, in this case, one through four, channel five and six are paired together, channel seven, eight are also paired together. So then that's where I'd wanna put it. Now, if I was plugging this into the back of the speaker, uh, I would probably be getting myself some unbalanced cables. If my synthesizer says balance unbalanced on it, where the connections are, then I can buy myself balanced or unbalanced cables. That'll work on the speaker as well. And you do wanna occupy the two channels. Now, you did say you really wanna have one channel, I think, so this way you can leave the other one open for a microphone. Then in which case, if you do buy a system that has a splitter on it, you want to buy basically two unbalanced to one unbalanced cable. So here we go. This is a cable that you're looking for. This cable here is basically an unbalanced cable. So it looks like mono at this end and it has a unbalanced left and right connector to it. It allows me to take cables from my synthesizer or any other instrument, plug them into here instead, both of them, 
and plug this guy into the back of the speaker. This is only gonna occupy one channel that way, leaving the other channel open. So that's how you fix it. If you are gonna go about buy an adapter, I'll try and make sure there's links at the bottom for this so you have an idea of what an unbalanced cable looks like. Uh, like I said, balanced, unbalanced, and you try and avoid doing this. When do I do this, you ask? Well, when is this important? If I'm planning on taking something from, let's say I was plugging an iPad or any other audio source that's feeding this. So I have a stereo signal coming in from regular equipment and I plan on using this end to plug into the back of the speaker or plug into the mixer. Now I'm gonna use this for channel you know, five and six. That way it works. If the signal comes in this way and goes out that way, that's okay. But if it's coming in this way and going out that way, that would be bad. So there you go. So I think that's gonna wrap up all the Q&A questions on it. I hope that helped. This is, by the way, a real handy thing to know because it lets you know how the technology works. So big plus on that. So what we're gonna do now is a quick little review of all the upcoming videos. We'll show some of the products off and uh, we'll get ready for all the new videos coming. We are gonna be having a premiere video on a brand new product from... Powering on, welcome to All Tech Lansing. Their new Thunder. So we're gonna talk about all the features of this guy, which is amazing. Uh, if you've seen or heard about the Lightning, this is his brother speaker, and man, it is awesome. So we're gonna be covering all the features on this and talking about who's gonna like uh, buying one of these. So that's gonna be on in the next few weeks. We're also gonna be doing a full review and who's gonna really like buying this from Pile, which happens to be their line array version, which is an eight inch driver with a full line array top. Straight up, nice, affordable piece of hardware. We're gonna cover all of this this month as well. This is the PPHP28, also from Pile. And because we're going into November, which means Christmas is around the corner, everybody's looking for fun party speakers. This is one of them. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about the price points. We're gonna talk about why people like buying this. Kind of fits right in the middle of some of the other brands out there. And it even comes with a microphone. We're also gonna start talking about audio interfaces. And right here, we happen to have one from M Audio. This happens to be the M-Track 2x2. Uh, great place to start when we're talking about audio interfaces. We'll talk about all the features and benefits of having an audio interface, not just this particular one on its own. That's also coming up this month. Speaker scrims, everybody likes speaker scrims. We're gonna show what two and three size speaker scrims are like. How affordable can they actually be and are they actually really good? We'll be talking about that in the next month too. This is the Electrovoice Evolve 50. One of the most popular line arrays out there. We've got it. We're gonna be talking about it. We're gonna compare it against other models. This is gonna be a great video because it's gonna cover so much when it comes to line arrays. We also have a mystery product that we can't talk about right now, but it's gonna be an awesome product. It's also probably gonna be coming out in the next few weeks. And that one's gonna be awesome to look for. So we'll look for a mystery review and testing of a new product, which I think is absolutely awesome. So that's just a sample of all the videos. We're still gonna have Q and A's. We still have all these other little things going on, but those are some of the big products that we've gotten in that we're gonna be doing videos on. So thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you want to find out when the next video is coming up and hit that little bell if you want to find out really fast because that's what it's there for. We'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.